down on the ground. Hands up. Down on the ground. Down on the ground. One nine three two. Go ahead, nineteen thirty two. Requesting backup to two six five one North Palmer. Two suspicious African American males in custody. Possible firearm involved. Nineteen thirty two. Requesting backup at twenty six fifty one North Palmer. Fuck man. Fuck. Fuck man. Fuck what? Why are you making all that noise when all of this is your fault? I'm not supposed to be here. Wait, what? So you saying I'm supposed to be here? Hell yeah! All of you! Ass sagging, gang banging idiots! All of you! What you say, Kunta? You booty scratching, funky armpit, funny talking, bootleg selling, can't take motherfucker! Bootleg selling, can't take motherfucker! That's all you know! So all that rubbish and you're saying that you're not the one supposed to be here. I'm the one that's not supposed to be here. Damn, man. I am not supposed to be here. Why am I still the one in chains? When will the chains ever break? I'm not supposed to be here! Every fucking morning I wake up, I gotta dodge the streets, dodge the police, that's the fucking government, the tax collector, child support. What did I ever do to deserve this? They act like it's a crime to be me. This is a fucking death sentence. Am I ever gonna get out of this shit, man? If it ain't one thing, it's the next. A month ago, we just buried Tyrone. I damn near could have got hit by that bullet. Now I am. Maybe I wouldn't have to deal with this shit no more. Now, I'm the one left with taking care of Ma, Brittany, and De'Ara on what check? Even going from 40 to 60 hours ain't changed a damn thing. I barely have enough. As if that ain't enough, now Tamika doing the most. Always on my ass to buy her Gucci this, Fendi that, lace fronts. I mean, I can't keep up. Now she's trying to leave me. And then I'm a stud over here thinking that he better than me. Fuck this. I'm the one that ain't supposed to be here. If it wasn't for your ancestors didn't sell mine into slavery, I wouldn't even be here. My ancestor. <laughs> Do I look like my ancestors to you? Yeah, you look like the motherfucker. Your lips, your nappy hair, you look just like them. <laughs> Are you serious right now? My ancestors sold your ancestors a long time ago. You've had a long time to fix yourself, but instead they are here playing the blame game. Instead of getting your act together, you're just here feeling swag. Sneakers, waves, rims. Jumping all over the place, spreading your seeds. Having baby mamas and babies, same age as your mama's babies. Don't even feel ashamed of yourself, you live off of, off of welfare checks. No, my nigga. No. You got it all wrong. We are not the majority on welfare. That's just that bullshit they try to put out there to make us look some type of way. I ain't on no welfare, nigga. I work for what's mine. And speaking of baby mamas, don't y'all got multiple wives? One here, one in Africa? Are you really taking care of them, my nigga? Are you lucky I ain't no snitch? Don't think I don't know about y'all trying to marry our women and get a green card either. Kai! My children. Oh, my children. <sighs> God. Can you imagine? After getting my medical degree from UI, 
I come here and they say it's not good enough. They say I have to start all over again. How can I do that and still provide for my children? The whole community back home knows I'm here. Even brag. Oh, our son is overseas, living large. They expect me to send money. How can I continue to send money back home? I come here and with all my degrees, the Oyubo groups me with these people just because of the color of my skin. And then the black ones call me smelly. They call me pompous. Ah! And then now my visa is about to expire. $15,000 to marry this, this Akata girl just because of papers. And then this Olodo is here telling me that I'm a woman up and down. Why? Why? Ah! This one is really selfish. I'm not supposed to be here at all. Look. At all! Look, you know nothing about me or my family. So I suggest you stop worrying about my family but yourself, okay? You're just feeling low because you've forgotten your roots. Forgetting the fact that you're first of all African before you're anything else in the world. Yeah, I'm lost. Okay. I hear you, bro. I ain't got no home. No culture. No place to go. No people. The Chinese got a Chinatown. The Indians. The Russians. We the only people that don't got a direct connect to our roots. Answer me this. Is there an African town? Or do I got to fly to some random continent and yell, I'm home. Nigga, please, y'all did this to me. Those people took my people and now I'm here, in time. Look, you're just angry and looking for who to blame. They shouldn't be blaming me, bro. Didn't you guys have a black president? Black president? Man, that nigga from Africa. His daddy came on the plane, mine came on the boat. And in change, must I that? So now he's African, right? When he was there fighting for you, all of you were like, Oh yes we can! Oh yes we can! Now he's out, all of a sudden you caught. Oh, he, he, is he to blame for this same situation that you're in right now? Oh, I forgot. It's my ancestors. Hell yeah, y'all ancestors. Them fake ass Africans sitting on their asses sending emails from the African prince. Nigga, that shit is old. Everybody a prince. Must I remind you, you in chains too, prince. Oh, you complaining about chains now? If any chains is your problem, why don't you just sit back, think about it and ask yourself, who really put you in these chains? Shit. How about you? Who put you in these chains? It's important, therefore, to know who the real enemy is and to know the function the very serious function of racism, which is distraction. It keeps you from doing your work. It keeps you explaining over and over again your reason for being. Somebody says you have no language, and so you spend 20 years proving that you do. Somebody says your head isn't shaped properly, so you have scientists working on the fact that it is. Someone says you have no art, so you dredge that up. Somebody says you have no kingdoms, and so you dredge that up. None of that is necessary. There will always be one more thing. Toni Morrison. We are not supposed to be here. Ground. 
Down on the ground! Down on the ground! I won't say it's just one thing that inspired it. It's a, it's a combination of uh, my own experiences in America. Um, being singled out and being made to know that I'm different from somebody else because of how I sound or because of where I come from or because of how I choose to express myself. Uh, the, the political climate, the social climate right now is also something that is a reality that also can actually be boxed into my experiences as well and what I see on TV and you know what I hear people speak about. You know, so I mean, it's, it's 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 just in the air. It's everywhere. It's thick. You know, so it's the same way people are talking about it in news or on radio or on social media. This is the way I can communicate. I think the intention was to put the vitriol on display. All the things that we think and say, however bad, um, to pretty much hold up a mirror to ourselves and and look at the reflection and see if we're okay with that and if we're okay with how we view each other and if we're not then what do we do moving forward we are trying to shine light on africans that are in this sphere this parameter called american yes that are trying to progress they're trying to leave behind every weight every bias every misconception how do we do that by learning by exposing ourselves more, by trying to make sure that we take on challenges that other people have refused to take on, by trying to be better, by trying to put up a better front, yeah, so that we are better represented, as opposed to stigmatized as people from the dark continent, as people that are poor, as people that are on drugs, as people that steal. As people, no, we have a lot that is good about us that is not being said. We want to shine light on it. We want to create collaborations between African immigrants and Africans and African Americans. I think it's also like a come to Jesus moment, if I can say that, um, because changing it from, not changing it, or highlighting another way of saying it and saying Africa's Americans is it. It's almost like we're acknowledging that African Americans are ours. You are Africa's Americans. It's making that connection that we don't see you as other. We acknowledge the fact that you were ours before you became anything else, right? And how do we get back to that place where we recognize that we are one? You are our brothers, you are our sisters. Um, you came from that continent. Your ancestors came from that continent. And, and, and by so doing, you did as well. Um, and it's almost like if you need that feeling of finding your roots, you realize that someone is telling you like you are ours. You've always been ours. We apologize that we haven't acknowledged that before. We apologize that we haven't acted that way. We apologize that we have said things that we shouldn't have said and, and vice versa. But now we're telling you that you're ours. We believe that by unifying the race, we create a base, we create a structure that allows for businesses across, you know, allows for relationships to build, you know, and actually activate, actualizing that thing we are calling Africa's Americans. So unifying the race, definitely a priority. You know, it's funny when people say, oh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Um, that's annoying because it's like some people don't even have boots, right? But some of us do. And if you do, I think you're obligated to find boots for the next person, um, to mentor, to encourage, to support um, other black people in education, um, with legal woes, um, in any way that you can, I think we owe it to each other to be there for each other, to pull each other up by our bootstraps, um, get ourselves into those institutions, run for office, you know, get that education, whatever it is that you need to do to be seen and heard. And when you get there, I think you owe the race, I think you owe yourself, I think you owe your brothers and sisters um, the, the ability at least to look back and pull them as well. Um, 
there's the whole crabs in a barrel movement where if we're all struggling and we're all trying to get out, no one ends up getting out. But if we all stand on each other's backs, we will. I think, I think we should. And I think if we start doing that, some of these institutions will start to flip and we'll finally get to a point where they work for us.